So time is ticking away. We've finished the fiberglass and now we're moving on to some structure. We've got about five days until somebody comes over here and shoots me because we're not done with it. <laughs> so we gotta get this base built up, get some polystyrene going. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the base is a three by three base and then we gotta cut 70 of those little ribs to even <laughs> <laughs> even start the uh, start the structure of the outer shell of the base of the airlock that we're building so we cut 70 pieces down of what inch styrene um, to get us a rib structure so we can build something off of it so we basically made a template of that rib structure and just repeated the process 70 times <laughs> well i think didn't i because uh, you were like well we got to cut all these by hand i'm like Cut them by hand. I'm gonna use my damn chop saw. Yeah. So I think we put, we tried to put a whole stack in the chop saw, and the chop saw was like, no, nah, I don't think so. Yeah. Because it's plastic. So then we we cut the stacks down to like four or five pieces. Right. I think. But that worked out. That saved us a lot of time. Yeah. Yeah. We built the whole, we built the rib structure, and then we started building um, the outer frame of the structure, the walls, and then went in and did all the, the paneling detail uh, to give it you know some form and some detail yeah to make it look like an airlock yeah so that kind of completed the outer structure we left the corners empty um, we're gonna fill those in in a later later part of the video yeah so I moved on to the, the building the, the the wall the airlock door structure by using those uh, radiator mounts uh, but when I needed something other than polystyrene, so I opted for aluminum. And since I have a metal break, I was able to break both pieces, uh, made matching pieces, and then um, actually I think I drilled the fan holes first, mm -hmm. and then um, and then I broke them and made sure they matched. So while I was doing that, Ron was forever grinding away at Winston. You know, if he wasn't doing the polystyrene for the base, he was. He would look at something at Winston and be like, okay, this doesn't look right, sand this down, re putty this, do this, do that. I mean, he was grinding away at Winston for a long time. Um, to just try to get that right look to him, you know, just not out of proportion shoulder or whatever, you know. <laughs> yeah. So there was a lot of uh, a lot of body feel, a lot of sanding, a lot of stepping back, looking at it from different directions, make sure it uh, looks proportionate. And I think, it, I think we got it you know, to the form structure where it looked right. And we can actually move on to uh, building the armor. I, I think I started building the armor and we started messing around with the motherboard, you know, ripping the motherboard tray, ripping the armor off and mm -hmm. getting that painted. Yeah. Of course, I got crap from Gigabyte about it, but hey, whatever. You know, Irene. Hi, Irene. <laughs> so uh, she pinged me, hey, what did you do to my board, basically? There was a red, white, and a black motherboard. Is the what was a Gigabyte G? The higher end Z170 motherboard, the gaming motherboard. It has all the decorative plastics and stuff. And um, I literally ripped everything off of it that I could because I, I didn't. The red and white didn't go with the build. So I took the board down to almost nothing. I pulled the heat sinks off. I pulled everything off. And um, and there's like these aluminum pieces for decoration on the heat sinks. So I peeled those back, um, just totally ripped them off and then got cleaned up the glue that was left. And underneath you had just plain black heat sinks. And I was like, well, this is perfect. And, and, and this first I, you know, after I flat blacked it, um, it, it gave me the idea to uh, just tear this piece up to make it look beat up, you know, the worn and torn idea. The weathered. Yeah, yeah, I think that's at that point after the, the motherboard, I think I moved over to help you mold up the armor because you had started working on the armor when I started working on the board. And um, it just, you know, you needed more hands to be able to do the work. Right. You know, one person freaking holding the piece or or holding the freaking heat gun and... Well, it wasn't really the armor, it was just like his, just his uh, skeletal structure basically is what we we're trying to build out and we built up the actual armor suit on top of that. So we were like heat forming the body, wrapping really thin styrene around the body just so it wasn't just fiberglass. Yeah. And then we started building, <coughs> we started building the armor off, off the styrene 
because it was an easier uh, foundation to adhere to. And that's when we started cutting the pieces and started building the structure for his power guns, his armor plates, his shoulders, or, you know, his jetpack too. And his jetpack. Jetpack was a couple day process because I don't know if I was just getting too tired or I couldn't visualize how it was going to be built. I was just, I tried three or four different ideas and I didn't like any of them burnt through two days trying to get it right. And I finally got it right. You know, it's uh, turned out well. Yeah. Up, it's 3D movement, you know. It's Freaking so, riveted it to his shoulders yep, and glued it. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Make sure it don't come off. Yeah. But yeah, I think one of the one of the hardest things too for you with the gun. I mean, I know you said it was easy, but it was uh, basically actually you know it was more for me because you knew what size the gun needed to be, right? Right. I had to come in and actually because you made the two side pieces, I had to come in and actually make out of aluminum something to mount because we wanted to put the reservoir in the gun. Right. We know it was going to throw the look of the gun out of whack. You know, obviously the gun wasn't gonna look like the actual gun. Well, I mean, it did, but in the end, after we put the reservoir in there, it almost looked like a, a freaking minigun, right? Yeah. Because we used the monsoon reservoir. Right. Um, and that had like the three little holes on the end and, and all the little bars down it, so it looked like a little chain gun or whatever. But uh, I, we, we, we thought it would be a cool effect to be able to put the reservoir right there in the front in the gun right. and, and have lighting under it and stuff so the hardest part for me was to get figure out a way to mount it to plastic that was going to be glued down you know and then and, and and be structurally okay so i think i ended up putting a flat piece that i bent on my brake uh to like a c so it, it could you could put one piece of the gun on one side one piece of the gun on the other side and that'd be a platform i could actually mount the reservoir too Right. And then, I, didn't I run like an angle or something all the way down so it hit the floor? Yeah. Yeah. But you know, the, when we first uh, sculpted Winston way back in the first episode when we were building out the aluminum, we had an idea of him actually carrying the gun in his left hand. Oh, yeah. And his right, or excuse me, in his right hand and his left hand just being kind of like resting on the airlock like he's using the lip of the airlock to be crawling out That's of. That's right. Uh but we realized that wasn't going to work, so we had to come up with an uh, idea to where he's actually carrying the gun now and using um, carrying the gun in his, what, his left both hand. Both hands. Both hands, yeah. So actually the sculpting of the hands, the way we sculpted the hands actually worked out well because one hand looks like he's, he's uh, has it on the, the trigger and the other one rested underneath um, the barrel of the gun. So that really worked, one of those happy accidents that really worked out well, you know? Yeah. And so, I and mean, at that point, and we were like running really short on time that we couldn't, you know, afford a big mistake like that. And it actually really worked out, I think, for the best. I think the way he's holding the gun now looks better than what we originally planned. And yeah, because it would have looked funny. Yeah. Yeah, so after we uh, figured out, you know, the, all the position of the gun and everything, and we, uh, Got all the um, aluminum in the mock-up. Mo in the mock -up. it was uh, time to lay down the first uh, first coats of primer and a little bit of wet sand. And so we finished off you know, laying down a few coats of primer, wet sand, and then a couple more coats of primer. Yeah, I think it, at this point too, we had one full day left of work that we were allowed. Right. Yeah. One really long day left of work. <laughs> 